everyone just a quick video on how to use explain everything to create your lesson video and record while you are adding to your resources and then uploading that video to youtube so i'm in explain everything here on the right and what i'm going to do is i'm going to click new project now i've got three choices a uh, blank canvas template there's about five or six of those that you can use um probably not for our purposes right now and you can also start with a file I always choose blank canvas and then add my files after, but you can choose whatever you like. So I'm going to click blank canvas and that'll open my project. And I have now got on the left hand side, my tools and the one that's on by default is the hand icon, which lets me move things around. So for now, if I click on my pen and I choose black, I can then go and write something and then back to my hand icon will let me move things around, zoom in and out. Um, at this point, I'm going to click the X down on the left hand side, select my object and then press the red cross again to get rid of it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add my lesson material. So I'm going to click the plus with like two little documents right at the top on the left hand side. And when I go there, I've got some options as to what I can insert. I usually would go and select file the yellow one there, which lets me connect to my Google Drive in the middle. If I have it stored on my iPad, it can, it'll be in the Files app in iCloud. Um, I can also go back and then choose an image if my material is something I took a picture of or it's in my camera roll. But if I click File, G Drive, it will open up Google Drive and in here I can choose to select my file. So if I want to go to Team Drives, for example, I select team drives, I'm going to go to my tech tips folder, I'm going to find my Google Classroom tips, and I'm going to select my Google Classroom 101. So if I tap on that, then it should download. Once it's downloaded, then you can, you'll see the little blue tick, and then what you want is the import button in the top right. And now it's going to ask you you can see here near the bottom, I've got 28 slides. So it wants to know if you want to import all of them or just some of them. You can see you can select, deselect all of them or select all of them. Um, you've then got options to as to how you want to put them in. So there, just above where it says insert, if you click on there, you've got options to put them in a grid, which will put all 28 slides on one page and explain everything. Um, Stacked would be stacked on top of each other like that. Horizontal, all on sa the same slide, horizontally. Vertical, all underneath each other. Or you can import all of them as a separate slide in Explain Everything. Now, the thing to remember is Explain Everything has an infinite canvas. So you can zoom in and out as much as you like. Um, it's not a bad idea to put them all on one slide if you're going to record because a recording can only be done on one slide. So if you want to record one video, uh, it's better to record all of that on the same slide because if you move on to another slide, that would have to be a separate recording if you like. So for this purpose, I would probably go with a grid and I am going to deselect all and just go to select the first three and then click insert. Now what it'll do, you'll see there, they are all three of mine inserted and with my hand tool selected, they're all grouped together as you can see if I move them around. I don't want them to be grouped together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the inspector, which is a little eye on the left hand side, third from the bottom. And now if I select it, you'll see on the right hand side, my inspector is set to edit mode at the top. I can now go to down and click ungroup. And once you ungroup them, if I now select my hand again, I should be able to move each one individually, right? So um, this is a really nice little way to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move them a little bit away from each other. And now this is where it becomes interesting because at the bottom left, where you've got the magnification icon, you've got your ninja mode. Now ninja mode, um, especially when you lock it, that's very important because then it doesn't jump back out into place. Ninja mode will let you zoom in and out, okay? And when you click the pen button and you zoom, you will be able to see the red border, which is what will get recorded once you press the record button. So with your, I, I often like to click the pen tool 
with one finger it'll write okay like that but with two fingers it'll allow me to zoom in and out so I'm actually to make this easier going to turn on in my settings you'll see there's an option to display on-screen taps and gestures so you can now see as I'm doing things so one finger and two fingers okay so what I want to do is I want to get rid of the writing so my X will do that for me and now what I want to do is in the next step is again select my pen tool zoom out far enough and now I want to use the hand to position these elements outside of the visible area and make the bit that I want to work on bigger okay if I double tap on an item it will align it perfectly so it's 90 degrees and now I can actually start thinking about my recording okay so I'm going to click my pen tool I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see a little bit better and now I'm going to select um, my pen I want to make it red my thickness is about right uh, so I am now just about ready to do my recording so before I start I'm going to check at the top where I've got my record button yours might be at the bottom that's something you can change in settings so if I click um, the microphone on the right that will disable the microphone it turns it off which means I will not hear my voice I prefer to maybe if I'm going to do a very fancy recording I will record multiple layers on top of one another so I might record just my actions and pen and writing so it doesn't get the voice and then I will overlay my voice on top of that in a second recording so I might show you how to do that later but for now I'm just going to turn on my microphone I'm going to press the record button so now this is recording and as I'm saying to my class hi guys I just want to show you today how to do a quick little Google Drive and Google Classroom working together scenario um, I can now go and write I can highlight certain areas I can pinpoint what I want them to look at uh, and then when I'm done I can click pause okay so what I've done now is I've paused my video at the bottom you'll see my timeline so if I move along the timeline you will see there is the red pen and as I move across the timeline drag with my finger the pen appears and disappears so what is also nice is after the recording I can now move my timeline and I can actually listen to my voice and make certain elements appear at exactly the right time after the recording so let's say for example I want to add a little circle around the classroom icon I can now go and draw that in there okay and if I move back along the timeline as I progress forward you'll see when I get to that point it now moves in so I can time it so that it comes in with my voice okay and I can actually press at the top the back button to go right to the beginning and then play it so now, now this, is this is recording and as I'm, and saying, as I'm to saying to my class hi guys, hi guys, guys I just want to show you today how to, how to do a quick, a quick little, little Google Drive, Google Drive and Google, Google Classroom working, working together, together scenario, scenario. Um, um, I, can I can now go and write, write. I can, I can highlight, highlight certain areas, areas. I can, I can comes my point what I want, what I want to, look to look at and I'm going to pause that so that works really really well I can now go back and run through my timeline and I can delete individual elements if they don't work for me. So if I see this classroom that I've kind of drawn around, I can tap on that red bit, uh, press and hold on it and then delete it. So that section will then get deleted. So you can go and edit your timeline. You can fast forward through things. You can add all sorts of nice little elements. One of the things I would recommend um, is to in fact do what I've done here I've opened a video on the left hand side so you can see my face as I'm presenting now a lot of us might not like that but it does add that human element it adds a little bit of a more oh my teacher is actually talking to me it's not just some random person so the way I've done that is a little bit sneaky I've created a split screen with keynote on the left it's a little bit more advanced um, but what you can do in explain everything if I click the little plus files button at the top left the same way you would add your file at the very top there's a green video option so you can actually insert video so you won't be able to do that now because I'm already recording video 
for this bit on the left here but that is how you would add your own face into your explain everything video and as you're recording your students will be able to see that so i'm gonna now just press the x and get rid of that okay now imagine i'm done i'm happy with my recording i've read through it i've checked it i've made sure everything happens nicely i've brought in my elements at the right time um, and in fact this is also by the way let me just show you if i zoom back out this is now also where if i'm done with this section i can move that out bring the next one in and you can do all of this while you're recording obviously um, but if I'm now happy with my recording, I now want to export this and save it to YouTube, upload it so that it A, makes it accessible for the students via a link. They can just click the link and watch it. But B, it also re reduces the file size, compresses it nicely. Um, actually, before that, let's just quickly see what are my settings in Explain Everything. If I go to the top right, three dots always take you to the settings. Top right, and there's my settings. Uh, the th third one along export if i click on export it tells me what is the resolution that i want to export this video as now it can go very very high to the maximum your ipad will support at the bottom the second one from the bottom is a typical hd resolution like an hd tv or a nice phone but if you want to keep the file size down i recommend the one that mine is set to here it's 124 by 768 i've also set the quality to good not average or best just like a nice uh, middle ground. I've included audio and what I've done there is I've made sure the file format is mp4. That's nice and supported everywhere. So now if I click done, the button right next to that, which is all these apps have different icons for their share or get out of this app button. The normal Apple one just has the arrow pointing straight up. Google Drive sometimes has it pointing at a little angle. This one has up and out. So that blue one there, if I click on that, I want to export this as a video so if i click video then i've got some options and one of the built-in options that explain everything it has is youtube so you'll see that there on the right hand side if i click on youtube it'll open up a little dialog box i can then rename it there at the top so if i don't want it to be called whiteboard 18 you'll see this is number 18 for me i will call this google classroom whatever i want to call it and I'm also going to select that and change that to a description. This will blah, 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 blah. Uh, I can then choose what the topic is. Uh, it's set to education. And at the bottom, this is very important. You want to make sure that it's not set to public because then anyone can search for and find this video. So you want to click and make sure it's unlisted. Okay. And then if I click the publish button, it will then prepare the project goes fairly quickly because mine is very small and we'll publish that thing to YouTube straight away so there it goes 81 percent uh, once it's preparing the project it'll then upload it and once it's uploaded you will have a link that you can then share with your students